Lecture 4. Transmission line input impedance, time average power, return losses, insertion losses, and the SWR. The input impedance. So determine an expression for the voltage at the input to the transmission line, assuming that your RS is equal to Z0. Refer to the figure here. So in order for you to find out what the input voltage Vg here is, first we have to determine the effective impedance seen at the transmission line input terminal. Looking towards the load at Z0. So you are looking from this point over here. So this would be your Z in. It is looking from this point. So this is called the input impedance denoted by Z in. So forming the ratio from the previous two equations, you have this one. In other words, the input impedance is purely reactive. So how do you know it is purely reactive? Because you have the minus J. So now you have to uh, find out the expression for the input impedance of an arbitrarily terminated transmission line. So this would give you Z in is equal to Z naught times with ZL plus JZ0 tan beta L over Z0 plus JZL tan beta L. So Z in would be in ohm. So this is the input impedance for a lossless transmission line of length L. So L will be given to you. And characteristic impedance Z0. So Z0 will also be given. So usually the case would be 50 ohm unless stated so. With an arbitrary load of ZL. So ZL will also be given to you. So there are three special cases that we can consider. So the first one. What if you have an open circuit load? So if you have open circuit load, meaning that your ZL, your load impedance is equal to infinity. Okay, so it will simplify your equation to be Z in is equal to minus J Z naught cot beta L. Second case, if you consider a short circuit load, you will have Z L is equal to zero. So your load impedance will be equal to zero. This will simplify your Z in equation to be J Z naught tan beta L. So these two cases is dealing with reactance. Yeah? And the third one with the resistive load ZL is equal to Z0. When your load impedance is equal to the characteristic impedance. So this will give you Z in is equal to Z0. So the input impedance is Z0 regardless of the length of the transmission line. So this would be the ideal case. All of these last three expressions should be committed to memory because you're going to use them quite a lot for the microwave circuits. So note that both input impedance of equation 6 and 7, so the one that is the open circuit load and also the short circuit load, are purely reactive because of the minus j and also plus j, which is expected since neither type can dissipate energy, assuming lossless transmission line. Now we move on to the average power, p average. So what is p average? So p average is delivering signal power to a load. If you want to deliver power from a source to an antenna, so the antenna here would be your load. Or you want to maximize the power delivered from a filter to an amplifier, so your amplifier here would be your load. So how do you calculate your p average? So 
P average can be calculated by using equation 10. So you have P average is equal to half of V0 plus the magnitude squared and then over Z0 times with 1 minus the reflection coefficient at the load squared. So your P power would be in watt. Now, if the load is entirely reactive, meaning that your reflection coefficient at the load is equal to 1. So, your P average would be equal to 0, meaning that there are no time average power being delivered to the load. So, here, your reflection coefficient at the load is equal to 1. So, the power that you send is not being delivered to the load. It is being reflected 100%. That's why you don't receive any average power at the load. Okay, so the relative time average power that is not delivered to the load can be considered a loss because everything is being reflected back. It is not uh, being accepted by the load. So the signal from the generator was intended to be completely transported, not the other way around. Next, we have the written loss, RL. So written loss can be calculated by using this equation. So RL is equal to minus 10 log of 10, the magnitude of your reflection coefficient squared. Or you can also use minus 20 log 10, the magnitude of your reflection coefficient. So there are two extremes. The first one, if you have a match load, so this is the ideal case. So when your load is match, meaning that there are no reflection, okay? So your reflection coefficient is equal to zero. So your written loss would be equal to infinity, meaning that there are no reflected power. Second case, if you have a reactive load, where your reflection coefficient is equal to 1, meaning that it is 100%. So, the signal is being reflected back. It will give you a written loss of 0 dB because all power is being reflected. So, consider the graph here. So, if you see this graph, the frequency versus written loss, so immediately you can tell that the load is working at 1800 megahertz because your written loss here is the deepest. Next, insertion loss. So insertion loss is a term closely related to written loss. So consider a junction of the two semi-infinite transmission line as shown in the figure. So you have the first transmission line over here and then the second one. So at the junction of this transmission line, the two boundary conditions are that the voltage and current are each continuous across the junction. So this will give you reflection coefficient is equal to Z1 minus Z0 over Z1 plus Z0. Okay. Now, the relative time average power delivered between two ports in a microwave circuit is often expressed in dB as insertion loss. So, IL is equal to minus 10 log of 10, the magnitude of T squared. Or you can also use minus 20 log 10, the magnitude of your T. So the two extremes for insertion loss, the first one, a mesh junction. So this is the only case when your T is equal to 1, meaning that your IL is equal to 0 dB. All power is being transmitted. So it is quite the opposite of written loss. Okay. So number two, a completely reflecting junction. So this is the worst case scenario. Yeah. So that your T is equal to 0 and your IL is equal to infinity. Meaning that no power is being transmitted at all. 
it is being reflected. Finally, we have the VSWR, the Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. Now, to help quantify the amount of interference that exists on a transmission line, we can also define the VSWR as Vmax over Vmin. Or you can also use this equation, equation number 23, VSWR is equal to 1 plus the reflection coefficient of the load over 1 minus reflection coefficient. So from this expression, we can definitely see that the SWR is intimately related to the amount of the reflection at the load. Now, three cases. If you were asked, if you were given ZL is equal to zero, meaning that your load is short circuit. Okay. So this will give your the magnitude of your reflection coefficient is equal to 1. So when it is equal to 1, your VSWR is equal to infinity. So this is very bad. Number 2, if you have an open circuit loop, meaning that your ZL is equal to infinity. So this will also give you uh, the magnitude of reflection coefficient at the load is equal to 1. So your VSWR is equal to infinity. So we want to avoid these two cases. Now, consider case number 3. So this is the best because when your ZL is equal to Z0, so your load impedance is equal to the characteristic impedance. So your load is match. So when you have a match load, this means that your reflection is zero. Nothing is being reflected back. Everything is being transmitted to the load. So this will give your VSWR is equal to one. So when you have a VSWR equal to one, this is the ideal case.